Hello everyone and welcome back. A season 23 is just around the corner and the Fawn will finally be getting a catalyst applied to it. This is big news for everyone since the weapon has been around since the release of D2 and it's only now it will receive a big buff for it. Not only will it get a stat buff from use, but it will also overflow the magazine now from Remnant Collection. So with this news, I thought why not make an endgame build based around the weapon as a whole, so that once it does come, players alike can use the build for pretty much whatever endgame content you like. Using the following will give you near infinite usage of poison threading damage build up over time. You'll get damage reduction and constant debuff application through your fragments, and you can use this in Grandmasters with absolutely devastating effect. Great build for those who love strand and weapons of sorrow builds. So, why not take a further look into this? To start, you're going to want to have the mind spun invocation where your grapple melee spawns free threading eggs. Then you want the wanderer where throwing a tangle at a target will track, stick, and then detonate onto a target, which will also suspend. We want to make it easy to apply our dot damage from two different sources as much as possible, just so the build can freely adapt to whatever situation we are in. These aspects will help the build from start to finish and also allow us to play pretty aggressively when the time does allow us to when using our grapple. Looking into fragments, Thread of Transmutation, where while having Woven Mel, Weapon Fire in the Blows create tangles. Thread of Warding, where collecting all the power creates Woven Mel. Thread of Generation, where dealing damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Isolation, where landing precision hits emits a severing burst from a target. We have a bit of everything going on here, with two threads focusing on personal defense, one that focuses on grenade regen, and another that focuses on debuffing enemies. I believe going with the following allowed the build to play more safer while using your weapons from distance, and also allowing us to use our grapple melee up close and personal when we get the chance. Although we should be using Thread of Evolution to help with threading damage, this isn't so much required, as the build-up of poison damage will support our Fredlins overall. Everything this build does will be supported one way or another through our poison damage build-up, so all you need to do is apply constant pressure to support this and go from there. For mods and stats section, you're going to need to focus on discipline and strength as the main focus of the build. This will be a relatively easy build to create as there are only two things you need to keep in mind when using a poison build overall. Discipline at tier 7 and then making use of the front of focus plus 30 bonus will allow us to reach our tier 10 once our given mod is active. Grenade based mods such as impact induction for a 20% grenade ability regen and bomber mod are optional for the user, although keeping impact induction and distribution mod will be helpful with how often you'll be triggering them. With the use of grab grenades, we will be getting a 53 second cooldown, however, with further generation in use, this will ultimately reduce the given stat down to about a 30 to 40 second instead. Outside of the use of hands on mod, your strength stat now should be at tier 7 and then have the front of Vigor mod for that plus 30 bonus towards the stat and overall a tier 10 once active. At this level, your arcane needle will be at a 46 second cooldown which is more than enough for how much the stat offers to users. You won't be using this ability all the time, so having it how it is and having a few mods available to support it is the best way forward. This section now covers the additional mods and armor charges being used in the build. Charged up is going to be giving you a plus one to charge stacks we hold. Next, you're going to want to have the Kinetic Siphon and Elemental Charge mod so that you can produce orbs of powers on kills and tangle usage. This will lead into our Kinetic Weapon Surge mod for a 10% Kinetic Weapon buff when active, and then also a time dilation mod for extended time based mods usage. Lastly, having heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger is a must with the heavy weapon we are using, but of course this is optional. Now for weapons, we have the form as a main primary of use. The following is soon to be getting a season 23 catalyst and changes that will soon make the weapon meta in both PvE and PvP. It will not only allow picking up a remnant to overlay your magazine up to 40 rounds max, but it will also come with additional increased weapon range as well as increased mobility and handling for a short time. This is good for PvP as the weapon stats around these areas are severely lacking and seeing these changes will hopefully bring the weapon back to its full glory. But most importantly, 
the ability to overload weapon is surely going to make certain builds designed around constant damage built up a monster for it. The following build is designed just around that idea of applying constant damage and not letting up until they are dead. Using it has proven to be fruitful in ending content, as long as you don't overdo it and are prepared for the slow reload. For heavy, we have the Sametician with field weapon experts of light. The following is great for bosses to mini boss DPS and can get things like bipod and threadling as a perk choice. My version focuses on speed, damage, and having a large reserve, so I can use it to take out multiple tough enemies. I recommend you go the same route and use the same role as I have, as it will save you time in need to always gather heavy ammo with a small reserve. But at the same time, having one with fedlings will allow easier cleanup and tangle creations if you care so much. Now, as much as a fedling build this is, the following necrotic grip and form combo allows players to truly lock down large groups of enemies within a single fedling and poison arcane needle, and from there, the rest is history. Thorn getting a catalyst will be a huge deal breaker in PvE, as the ability to overflow your weapon will allow Thorn to last much more longer in the field, and will also give players a bigger reason to use it in PvE more. The following build is designed around the upcoming catalyst and weapon changes to make it the best Season 23 Thorn Fedding build to pick up and use for however long you like. One single Fedling and Poison Arcane Needle is enough to devastate a small group of minor to major enemies. However, by applying Grapple Grenade, Mindspun, The Wanderer, and Necrotic Grip together, you'll get a devastating Fred and Poison build that will always apply constant dot damage as you please. The Grapple Grenade effect will apply high damage upon impact, and also spread Poison plus Fredlings as you use this dispense. From here, it will then apply more heavier damage that will ultimately feed back into our grenade region and allow us to repeat it multiple times over. That's for the up close and personal style of the build that does really good damage against mages and champions. In fact, once you stun a champion and use the following, the amount of damage you apply will be enough for you to trigger a finisher at least, so it does offer a high risk high reward towards players. But if you prefer distance instead, then the build can do just that. Using form and getting kills will spread the necrotic grip effect far and wide, as players would desire it to be. But you also have the perch fillings on you as well, so they will also go to where you shoot, so you'll never really lack in DPS here. Creating tangles from distance will suspend targets, and then applying constant hits will trigger Fred of Isolation effect, which will debuff targets. And then of course, once the catalyst is then unlocked and the changes are added in, dealing a final blow and absorbing the remnant will grant additional increased weapon range, as well as increased mobility and handling, and of course, that overflow bonus. Simply put, the build is a felon build through and through, but allows the form to not only dominate in close to medium range fights, but also improves the performance of using the fawn when applying the catalyst as well. Using this in anything endgame once the catalyst does come in will allow you to apply constant dot damage from one of two areas, and although using a suspend grenade will be better applied here. For me, I tend to focus more on a all-rounder setup that can apply usefulness against both adds and bosses. It's easily going to make running grandmasters with fawn and strand builds a lot more better, and fun overall, since the weapon isn't in the best place of personal use. So if you're after a build that covers your upcoming form catalyst down to a T, then why not give this fella a try? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.